Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is going to be a relax and sleep hypnosis a daily recording. I'd like you to get yourself comfortable sitting in a comfortable chair or lying down on a bed or some other kind of flat surface similar to a bed. Ultimately, it doesn't matter how you sit or lie. The main thing is that you're comfortable. The main thing is that you're going to be able to comfortably sit like that for a period of time. So for my, an example for myself is I can't lie down on my back on my bed. Uh, for any length of time because I have sleep apnea. So there's a chance that I'll stop breathing. So when I go to bed, I lie on my side, on my right, on my left. So for me, the ideal way to listen to a recording like this would be sitting in a chair, a reclining chair, but so that it's still not leaning back too far, if that makes sense. So we need to adapt to our own personal requirements. Now, that's not to say that I can't listen to recordings when I'm in bed, because I do. But I will listen while I'm lying on my side. I like to listen to... I quite... The kind of things I like to listen to is... motivational type of recordings one of my favourite people to listen to is Earl Nightingale but I also love Bob Proctor, Zig Ziglar and a few others that are just amazing so what I've been thinking about is ways to calm down Ways to dress myself so that my sleeves are down as well. So ways to um, calm down your breathing during a stressful situation or maybe during a time when you're feeling uh, panicky or just a little bit, maybe a little bit too much going on. But at the same time, without giving too much attention to the breath because what I noticed during my days of having panic attacks I still get them sometimes is I know how to deal with them generally but I went through years of this back in 2000 and November 2002 until the end of 2005, so it went on for quite a while, but gradually reduced it, Um, which is why I've kind of focused on making relaxation sessions for people, because that's kind of what I needed at the time, and didn't necessarily have access to. Which is not completely true because there's always been relaxation sessions available. I just didn't, I couldn't find anything online that suited my requirements. Or at least that's how I felt at the time. So this is going to be a relaxation session. Okay. Aimed at re- Reducing your tension, aimed at calming your mind, but through breathing. But at the same time, there's not going to be any holding of breath. And there's not going to be any forcing of breathing out. It's a very relaxed, very loose situation so you know there's no hard and fast rules 
you must do this and you must do that and no. You've got enough crap going on if you're in the middle of a panic attack or you're, you know, very stressed for a reason. You got, you don't need extra crap on top. The whole point is to, what you really need more than anything else is proof that you're going to be okay. Let's face it, let's be real. If, if someone's in the middle of an anxiety attack, they're having issues with breathing. It's what it feels like. It feels like there's stuff going wrong with the breathing, uh, heart rate, all that stuff. What we want to know is that we're going to be okay. That's more important. It's almost like we need, to, it'd be good to know, is it a panic attack or is it something else? Now, a way that we find out that we're okay can be by calming yourself down, but allowing yourself to calm down gently, not forcing it, not focusing on the thing that you don't want to focus on. So to get someone to swim when they're, you know, they're like, feel like they're drowning, but to get them to swim, it's not by getting them to focus on the water that's going into their mouth. That's, you know, that's not a thing to focus on. Focusing on the fact that everybody can float. And, and even if you can't swim very well, we can all float. We can all, you know, as soon as you relax and reduce tension, stress, and just relax and let go, pretty much everything becomes easier. It just feels simpler. So, in the first instance, and I realise that this perhaps isn't going to be listened to by people that are in the midst of a panic attack, but it can be used in the future, this particular technique. It can also be used, this breathing technique, can be used just to calm you down, generally. And when I say breathing technique, it's breathing. That's it. It's not really a technique. But it's, it's doing it without putting pressure on you. Without giving you, of adding anything on top. You know, we don't need any more crap. Just let's calm down. Don't need to like remember this and this and this and this and this and you know, it's I've seen this in the past in groups where maybe someone's having a bit of problem with stress and and then suddenly they've got one of the leaders of the group staring at them in front of everyone else and getting them to breathe and it's almost like adding extra pressure onto them. When really all they need well, that it helped them, but they need to just calm down. And it's easy to say. Of course it's easy to say. Califrigi, Kalim, whatever that was, that's a hard thing to say. You know, a thing from uh, The Sound of Music. Is it Sound of Music or is it Mary Poppins? Califrigi, Gladidididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididididid
That's what we're doing. We're taking, if we're in a tense situation, we're breathing too much, too much, too often. And those, let's face it, the chemicals in the blood and all, all the oxygen stuff, it's too much for the body. It's just it over, over, it's just too much. It won't kill you, but it does make you feel unwell in the short term. Added to the stress and, and then there's the brain and the mind, you know, just going on and on and on. So the breathing, there's two things you can do. One is like they say, if you breathe through your nose, that is like the equivalent equivalent of breathing through a brown bag or whatever color bag where, you know, someone's hyperventilating in the movies or on a TV and they breathe through the bag and it kind of, because there's only a limit of breath able to go in and out of the bag, it calms the person down. It stops that hyperventilating, that excess of air entering the body, entering the lungs, the bloodstream, the brain and all that stuff. So the theory is if you breathe through your nose and you don't breathe through your mouth, just breathe through your nose during this period, less air gets into your nose. Now, I guess it depends how big your nose is. I've got a big old conch, so maybe I'll get more air than someone with a tiny little sweet little nose. I don't know. But that's what I generally do. I generally focus on just breathing through my nose. Now, sometimes it's fine. Other times I find myself, I don't, I struggle to catch my breath. So that causes more stress. So I don't, I don't always like that technique. That's something you can do. And as we all know, to get the most amount of oxygen, the most amount of breath into your lungs, you breathe through your mouth. It's just a bigger hole, basically, isn't it? But this technique is, you breathe through your mouth, but only through a very, very small opening. So you don't have your mouth like, ah, oh, it's just open a little bit. And you just breathe gently. You don't control your breath. You just do it gently. Because as long as you have your mouth open, you will get enough oxygen. You will. You can't not. Now, of course, you can get a bit too much. You can get more than you need. But again, it's not going to harm you. You'll feel a bit weird. But that's no different from, you know, doing handstands or doing somersault. <laughs> Not that I've done a somersault for quite some time. But you'll feel weird because the blood's moving around and all the blood goes to your head. Uh, my friend used to have this thing which went across the door frame and he'd he'd have it under his knees and he'd be upside down. The uh, the theory was the the blood going to his head would somehow activate his brain or something, I'm not sure. Um the thing is he it, it collapsed and he fell on his head. Um now I don't think it really affected him. But he was he was about six foot six. So he, it kind of, it, his hair was, his pretty much head was on the floor anyway. So it, it I think he was okay. Oh, I didn't, perhaps I should have asked. It might still be there. This is about 12 years ago. Um, so we do things like that and it affects how we feel temporarily. I mean, sometimes I'll get up out of a chair too quickly and I'm like, ooh, a little bit dizzy. It's temporary. It's normal. 
for that to happen. Maybe more so with, as I get older, perhaps. But it used to happen when I was a kid. He'd hold my breath for too long and I'd get dizzy and all I'd, when I was at school, and because I never got picked for football, for the football team, because I was, I was a problem child. Let's put it that way. So what I would do is I would spin around like Wonder Woman. Remember the old original Wonder Woman used to spin to turn into Wonder Woman? And I'd spin until I was so dizzy and I'd stop and then I'd just try to walk and I'd end up walking into the goalpost or something and I'd just fall over. That's how I spent my youth. My childhood was very weird. But I did it purposely because I knew that it it caused me to feel weird and caused me to lose um, the balance and all that stuff. So that's all that's happening is if we breathe too much, a bit too, too much, too much oxygen, it affects our balance and it affects our, how we feel. And then the mind going and noticing, oh, this feels weird. And the catastrophizing makes it worse. And everything seems to just magnify. Well, by just allowing yourself, first of all, to realize that none of this stuff is that important. That you are okay. And if you, if you're concerned, go to the doctor, go to the hospital, because that's what they're there for. Get peace of mind to make sure that you know you're okay. And then you can use that breathing. I use the word technique very lightly. Where you're breathing through your mouth. And you can notice the coolness of your breath. And then when you get to a level of feeling that, you know, your lungs are full, you put no effort into the breathing, no control, you're just breathing. And when it feels, you know, you're full, that's it. You can just let the breathing go out. And to start with, it will be short breaths. It will be, because, you know, sometimes to get a full lungs of uh, air takes a little bit of, you know, a bit of effort, a tiny little bit of effort, but a little bit of effort. And to push air out can also take a bit of effort, you know. But I, I'm, I like laziness. I'm a very, I'm a very big fan of laziness when it comes to natural stuff like breathing. Especially in this scenario where you can relax. Because the whole point is to relax. It's the whole point of this recording. It's the whole point of making the videos. The whole point of kind of what I do is to see things differently, notice things, experience things in a new way where maybe you used to get, I keep banging the microphone. Maybe you used to get tense and worried and concerned and, you know, about what's happening. Why is this happening? What's going to happen next? And perhaps, perhaps, when you listen to me, you start to realize that maybe, Possibly, 
this stuff doesn't need to be taken quite as seriously as perhaps you have done. Maybe. Possibly. I don't know. Taking things a little less seriously. Just cutting off like 5% of the seriousness. Could change the way you feel before any such anxiety or panic attacks occurred. Almost preparing yourself to feel more comfort and to not even get to that level where you felt the need to use a breathing technique because you may just you know notice the changing in breathing and think okay let's just allow the breathing to be all right let's just just allow the breathing to be calm itchy nose just allow your breathing to be okay it's almost like giving yourself permission to feel relaxed and in a way you're the only one that can do that no one else can no one else can give you permission to feel any certain way other than yourself. Because you're the boss. I think that's something that we forget. I know I forget. But we're in charge of ourselves. We have a huge effect. And can have a massive effect over how we feel and how we will feel. We can even, well, we do. We we rehearse, don't we? I know I have. Rehearsed the conversation before it's happened. Including the emotions connected to that conversation. Already experiencing the, the difficulties and the stress and tension. Before the conversations even happened. Internally, I've already had those feelings. And expecting worse when it comes to the conversation. I've done that a few times. Maybe you have. Question is why? What the heck is the point in that? Other than just to make yourself feel crap. Why? (laughs) You know? Experience it once. Why rehearse it beforehand? And then, of course, afterwards, how many times do we replay it back to ourselves? What is the point? Other than to, than to learn, you know, we can learn from our mistakes and think, okay, well, next time, um, next time I give that person the bad news, I'll do it without eating a big chocolate cake. You know, you can, like, change things up. Like, okay, I'll learn from that. I learned from that. Yeah. Bad news and roller skates don't go together. Okay, fair enough. I've learned. Instead of replaying it over and over again. So that breathing technique, this breathing of just having your mouth open a little bit. Just so you can breathe out of you, into your mouth. And the thing is, because you're not forcing it, it feels nice. 
I mean, I prefer to breathe through my mouth than through my nose. I get a clearer, it just feels clearer. I can get more in there because the hole's bigger. I've got a couple of big holes in my nose, you know, big old nostrils, like a big gorilla. It's fine. That's, I've got a big massive nose. But my mouth is still bigger than that. And I like the feeling, I like the feeling of the cool air entering into my mouth, going into my throat and, you know, just gently entering my lungs. And even though it might not feel like there's a lot going in there, I know that there's enough. There's definitely enough going in there. I mean, you look how much professional swimmers can get done with one bit of air. And then they're under, underneath the water for like 40 seconds. So, you know, it's, I've definitely got enough oxygen going in there. And then just allowing it. Just breathing out naturally, knowing that, I mean, you see, we use the word natural quite a lot in our lives, but there really isn't anything literally as natural as breathing. It's the most natural thing in the world. Breathing, sleeping, farting, you know, it's blinking. It's just, these are just things that are natural to all of us. Now, of course, I don't fart because I'm a perfect human being. But, you know, you can learn to be perfect like me one day. <laughs> so breathing is the most natural thing. And when you don't put the pressure on yourself, when you just allow yourself to breathe through your mouth at a pace that feels comfortable to you, you're not controlling it. You're just allowing it. It's just happening. It's more an observation than anything else. And then you breathe out again. And because you're focusing on your breath, but you're not focusing on controlling it, you're just observing it. And while you're observing it, there's no obstruction, there's no constriction, there's no, there's nothing getting in the way of that breath entering into your mouth, your throat and your lungs. It's going in as quickly as it needs and it's leaving as slowly or quickly as it wants to. And I think this is quite useful to remember that you're going to breathe anyway. We can't just stop breathing. We can for a certain amount of time. You can hold your breath, but eventually you'll have to breathe because our bodies force it. We have no choice in the matter. I mean, I'm without going into extreme situations, we can't control that. We have to breathe and we will breathe. Now, of course, if you hold your breath, when you do breathe, you'll be breathing a lot of oxygen, trying to get back, you know, to feeling normal again, to, feel, you know, to have that level of oxygen in your blood system. But if you're not holding your breath and you've just got your mouth open a little bit and you're just breathing, and you're just observing the breath, it's just, it's a relaxing situation. Maybe you find it easy to do it while you're listening to me, although I could be a complete distraction from it, but I could also be a distraction from the other stuff. So it's not, not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, it might be a very good thing. 
to have a distraction in the moment. Almost. I mean, it might be an annoying distraction. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm quite annoying at times. And I might take some getting used to. (laughs) I don't know. So just using the technique might be enough. However, you might, that's high pitch, wasn't it? However, you might find that spending 30 minutes with me when you're, you're started or about, it feels like you're about to have a panic attack, anxiety attack, uh, very stressful feelings. If you spend that time with me, Instead of on your own. Maybe. You'll calm down. Your breathing will be. Very normal. Your mind. Won't be racing around and. uh, Thinking the worst because you're focusing on me. If nothing else, focus on my funny face, my squeaky voice, and my boring mannerisms. Like, uh, you might fall asleep. And that's not the worst case scenario, is it? To be fair. Unless you're flying a plane, then obviously it is. So, well, maybe not for you, but all the passengers. <laughs> so just, maybe, Maybe this can be a safe space. And you might think, well, it's not safe because you're messing around and you're not taking it seriously. Okay, fair enough. That's a good observation. And I'm not. But I am. So when you spend time with me listening... It's not going to be serious, serious, serious the whole time. Because I don't think that's helpful. Personally. Now, it will be respectful in a sense of I'm not doing this just for a jolly, just for the sake of doing it. It's not that I don't have better things to do with my time. Because I do. This is, well, maybe I don't, but as far as helping people but you know there's other things I could be doing I'm not just doing this just for a joke I mean I got dressed up for this look at my t-shirt 6,000 miles away I got this or was it like yeah I think it was anyway if nothing else I can be a distraction like a real living distraction And maybe I guess if I made a few more of these types of recordings where I talk to you during just to assume that this is the beginning of a panic attack or during and we spend this time together and I talk to you or I guess I'm talking at you, but we can share this time, share this experience. And one thing you can know, I mean, you only know because I tell you, but it's true, is I have had, you know, panic and anxiety ruled my life for quite some time. Uh, I lost my job. I lost lots of things because of it. I even ended up going bankrupt. Um, so, you know, it ruled. At the time, I felt that it ruined my life as well. But I'm here. It hasn't ruined my life because I'm, I'm here, you know. Looking sexier than ever. So I went through that. I still have occasional 
um, blips, I still have occasional panic attacks. Um, because, you know, I guess just a human being, everyone perhaps has, has uh, anxiety levels that go a little bit more than what should. The problem is if you've had this stuff before, it's like, oh, where's this going? So, although I'm sitting here in my palace, <laughs> in my little room, I'm sitting here and we're sharing this experience. Just know that I have experienced uh, what I would class as the most extreme of anxiety over the years. And I really didn't know if I was even going to survive it. I didn't know what was going on at times, even though logically I did, you know, like, well, I had this last night and the night before. But in the in the midst of it, it's like, I don't know. I'm not sure. I didn't have anyone to share it with. I had people I could call on. And they would look at me like I was an alien. Now, my best friend, I went and visited him in London. This is back in 2003. Maybe 2004, you know, around that time. And we went for a walk just down the road with his dog. And I had to stop because my legs went numb. And I, I, I could hardly talk. I said, I've got to go back. I need to go and lie down. Now, he was angry with me. Because, you know, I travelled all the way up there to visit him. And then suddenly I'm like, I can't even walk down the road with his dog. Without making a big deal of it, I guess, was how he was feeling. Well, that wasn't helpful to me. But then why why should he know how to deal with that? He's got no training. He'd never experienced anything like that. And I'm not sure how much use I would have been to someone else either at that time. But perhaps now, having been through it hundreds of times probably, if not more, I... Maybe we can share that time together. I mean, I had my friend, um, it's a few years, quite a few years ago, he phoned me up and he was having a panic attack. Never had him before. Well, he had a couple like leading up to that and he'd been to the hospital, the doctor, he was worried and, and he was, he was like in his late sixties, I think at the time. So he was m making sure that he was physically okay and everything. And he phoned, phoned me up, knowing what I do, making videos and audios and stuff. And all he really needed was just for me to be there on the other end of the phone. Just to be there. Just to, to share that moment with him so that he wasn't alone. Um, but... Sometimes worse than being alone is being with someone that really doesn't understand, hasn't got a clue. Now, I, I'm a big believer that we all experience things differently. We're never going to understand necessarily how another person feels. But I do understand about panic attacks, anxiety, stress from different angles, from, you know, the clinical side of things, from studying, I'm a professional, I was a professional counsellor, got a degree in counselling, as well as making thousands of recordings over the last 17 years, helping people with anxiety and stress and stuff like that added on to having experienced it myself. So maybe, 
maybe this can be useful. Just to have me kind of in the room with you. Not, not literally in the room with you. That might be creepy. Um, but you know what I mean. But also not to, not to take things too seriously. To be able to let go and relax and know that you're going to be okay. Know that maybe you'll fall asleep listening to me. You'll fall asleep and you'll wake up in the morning or in a few hours time and you'll feel completely different. Physically, emotionally, your stress levels will be back to normal or you may even feel especially relaxed. And that's all good. That's all fine. And the main thing is getting through it. We can prepare to a degree. And the more relaxed you feel during the day, generally, the more relaxed you're going to feel tomorrow. And the more relaxed you're going to feel the next day. And the more relaxed you feel when you're on your own, the more relaxed you're going to feel next time you're on your own. And all that stuff, you know, it's just standard, isn't it? We become accustomed. We be, get used to feeling a certain way, a certain level of calmness, peacefulness, uh, confidence in your own ability to feel relaxed and to feel safe in your own home, to feel safe in your own head, in your own body, and to know that you're going to be okay, because you are. So I would be interested in knowing if this is something that may be of use to you going forward. To maybe make a, I don't know what to call it, something like this, relax and panic attacks or whatever. But actually, spending time with you, as well as, you know, giving some maybe some suggestions of well-being and uh, suggestions of certain relaxation techniques that might be useful to you. So thank you for listening. This is the end of this recording. Remember to be kind to yourself. You deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Thanks a lot. Bye.